Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are making DIY alcohol inks with simple supplies that you most likely already have in your home. We will jump into the tutorial right away. I just wanted to show you some of the designs that I've made using my alcohol inks. It's such a fun and easy and simple process. I made this one on camera today and you literally can have alcohol inks in your possession in the next 15 minutes and you can do all of this all of this in the next half an hour looky look at this all right let's jump into that tutorial for this awesomely cool project you only need two ingredients one dried up old markers you don't need this many you only need a couple and ingredient number two is rubbing alcohol. This is methylated spirits. I'm not sure if that's what it's called all over the world, but basically it's ethanol 95% and rubbing alcohol can either be ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. I found that this bottle was much cheaper than the bottle marked rubbing alcohol. So in any case, you need a high alcohol solution like this. Those are the only two ingredients that you need and you'll just need some other supplies. Just like with cooking, you need your ingredients and then you need your tools and you need your pots and pans. So for this project, we need some jars. They don't have to be glass. I thought they had to be glass, but this one's plastic and works fine. I was using my empty skincare bottles. As you can see here, they are glass and they have this dropper, which is why I was using them, but I ran out, so I moved over to some plastic containers. You might need some tools like this. You will need gloves, perhaps things like this, where you need to pull things out and, you know, whatnot. And then you need things like this. I am using photo paper, which I came across in an op shop, and I see this quite a bit around, actually, because people are not really getting their photos developed anymore or are they i'm not really sure i'm not so i just assume nobody is and that's why i'm seeing all this photo paper around i found that it this project or these inks work perfectly well on this even though there is a specialized product called yapo paper which i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it correctly However, it's a waterproof paper and it's probably quite expensive. I'm not even sure. It might not be expensive, but it's a specialized paper for this kind of thing. So if you have that, perfect. And the very last thing you need is something to protect your surface, preferably plastic. I'm using a cereal bag because none of the inks are going to seep through this bag. Okay, I have my gloves on. I am going to start making the ink. So I'm going to choose one color and I think I'll probably go with blue. I don't know why I chose blue, but I'm going to get all of my blue marks, markers out. So I just want to reiterate that please don't go and use brand new markers because it's just so wasteful, I feel. I mean, this is all about, you know, recycling things and, and using them up. So all of these markers are dry. And the reason why I have so many is because I collect them and I take them to be recycled. I take all of these markers to Officeworks for recycling, which is our local office supply store, and they recycle all this sort of stuff. And even after I do this project, when I remove all the stuff that I need, I will still take these plastic bits to be recycled. I just pulled out all of my blue markers, but you most definitely don't need this many. I reckon you would get a nice ink from maybe three. And it's very easy to come by used markers if you have kids or grandkids, even if you ask, you know, neighbors, local school. All right, step number one, pull out the nibs. So this one is double-sided. You just pull it out, very easy. Then see how you can get the main part, which is inside here. And this is where this kind of thing comes in handy. So I try not to break things, but sometimes things break. Maybe I can just pull this out. So they're all different, but let's try. Oh, here we go. It fell right out. Okay, this is what we need. So I'm just gonna pop that there. There's an empty marker. And now this can go and be recycled. They're just flying out. All right, so these ones were easy. You might come across some markers that are quite hard to open. 
these nibs tend to come out quite easy but you might have trouble with getting the inside bit uh, i forgot what it's called so this one i can see over here it has a cap so what i found is if i press somewhere there sometimes it it just flies out so you have to be careful you don't want to point it towards you and then press no 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 because sometimes they shoot out very quickly sometimes they just break let's see what's going to happen here okay so you can see how that's kind of see what if i pressed it harder it would have just shot out so now i can just kind of try and get it out like this and there we go so i'm just gonna do the thing with only the three markers these markers are completely dry you can see like i'm really smushing it down and there's barely anything coming out so i just want to i'm doing this so i can demonstrate to you even though it's there's nothing left there is actually something left so you grab your jar this is quite a large jar i can fit a whole lot in here and i will but as you can see here, I've done the same thing with much smaller jars and I couldn't really fit a whole lot in there. So really you don't need much, especially of the darker pigments like blacks. You don't need a whole lot of black markers to get a really potent solution. And also I am not taking off this plastic part that's surrounding this spongy part. I'm just like chucking it all in there like this. And there we go. That's all in there and now what i'm going to do fix my camera all right i am just going to pour in a little bit of this liquid and you will see straight away it's going to start extracting that pigment you can see how that pigment or that ink is draining from those things that i've popped in there and i know it's hard to see you can't really see it but i'll show you here it's only been a minute less than a minute that this has been soaking in there and already that color has been extracted you can see it's quite pale but it's there so i like to leave this in there you know i'm gonna say for a couple of hours but really i'm i leave this in there for however long i'm using it for like this blue color i made a few months ago actually and i just keep using it and i just keep adding more methylated spirits and you know you can see how dark that one is so this one's got a few more of those inner bits in there of course and the more you have in there the darker it's going to be so what i'm going to do now is add more why not maybe i can show you a couple of fails with trying to get the inner pieces out because all the markers are different so just have a look this one looks like it's got an opening here sometimes they have an opening here so sometimes you might be able to pull this bit out sometimes you might just be able to pull this bit off and sometimes you can't do that so you just do the thing that i did before and sometimes if nothing else works like it's not working here just break the whole thing just like that and you know hope that that will get recycled you can see i've broken a couple previously so sometimes that's the only way Another funny thing you can do is create new colors by mixing colors. So I wonder if I mix blue and some other color. I'm going to try that next. I have my color wheel here because I'm hopeless with colors. So if I mix blue, not only am I hopeless with colors, I'm hopeless with these color wheels too. What am I looking at here? Oh, I see. Okay, if I add yellow, I knew that I will get green if i add you know what i'll just do blue i'm just gonna add these couple like i said before i just leave them in there and i keep just adding more and more solution and i still haven't run out of the pigment in this one for example i used it all up and then i just topped it up with some methylated spirits again and again i got this again the same amount of intensity in color so i'll just keep going until there's no more color left I ran out of containers unbelievable so i'm just going to do use a small container with a small limited amount of inks and i, I don't have an orange so i want to make an orange color so because it's only a small container i might need to cut it down a little bit shorter i find that these dried out highlighters are fantastic for this project so i'm gonna use this but another thing that i found is that they are notorious to open up so i don't even know where i would kind of start 
you know if it's not easy to open up i might even get up, give up on it i don't want to be causing issues i don't want any injuries so do be very careful with this sort of stuff oh my goodness look what i've done just after i've lied that i will give up <laughs> i never give up i'm just gonna shove this whole thing in there why not i can always take it out you know that's what i'll do i'll extract what can be extracted and then i will take it out and i will add more of the other stuff Ooh. extraction complete most of that pigment is out and you can see here my orange color i didn't even leave it in there i just popped it in and took it right out If you're using tour bottles like this and you're popping your nibs, what are they called? I don't know what they're called. You're popping these things in. You don't have to saturate the whole thing with alcohol. I will demonstrate. If only one end is in contact with alcohol, you can see that alcohol goes right up there. It's gone all the way up. It starts leaching that pigment out. So, you know, the whole thing is saturated. You can see this. I'll show you. So it went all the way up. Oh, look at that pigment. So much fun. So this project, for example, isn't something that I would do with my kids, you know. Because of the dangers of using this highly flammable liquid and all that sort of stuff. Like, you know, I would do the project and show them what I did with their used markers. But I wouldn't go and have them sit next to me while I'm using this highly volatile, highly flammable liquid. You know, there's all the fumes. So another thing is when you're working with your inks to do it for short periods of time or do it outside or in a well ventilated area. Nothing bad is going to happen. You might get a headache and stuff. And I'm speaking from experience here. All right, so there's my orange one every time i do this all the liquid goes down and you can't see what's happening but you will be able to see in a few moments because i'm going to use it all right so we did orange and blue today and let's see what we can actually do with these all right so i've made black and black is really 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 high potent ink even though i was using all used up markers but let me tell you, these Sharpie markers, they are so highly pigmented, even when dry. I have made yellow and pink, green and purple. I have two blues, one that I did today and one that I did months ago. And I have an orange. I don't have a red. I wish I had red, so I have all of my primary colors. But I only have like one red used marker, which is very strange. But here we go. Photo paper ready here on the side and now i'm gonna go ahead and show you how i created all of these it might be loud because i opened the door like i said before you want an open ventilated area don't mess around with this stuff and you want to have a rag nearby as well all right so this is what i do i apply directly onto this plastic and I do this, and I only do this with the black ink. And then I go over the top with, which one should I choose? Pink. A few, uh, add a few drops here and there. I don't know, just play around. And then I get my photo paper and I do this. And let me just say, this dries pretty much instantaneously. Like when you lift it up, count to three, it's dry. Here we go. And then what I do is I pick up where I have white spots. I kind of, I don't know why I don't want to have the white spots. So I kind of pick up all of that color, right? Or what I've done on some of them, I go and I add yellow and then I pick up yellow. All right, there's that one. That's what that one looks like. There's a bit of white. You can see it's already dry. Like that's already dry. Okay, there's that one. Let's do another one. Maybe I will add. So I already have, you know, this is also dry. It, this alcohol evaporates very quickly. And where does it evaporate? Right up your nose. And that's why you want to have open doors and preferably even just go outside. Just be on the safe side, you know. Okay, I've got purple. I'm going to go in with some yellow. No thinking required. Grab my thing, pop it down and lift it up. 
and there it is maybe pick up some color before it's dried you know it looks like this maybe i can i don't know let's see what will happen if i do some dabbing and, and stuff do we like that let's dab some more i don't know do we like it i don't mind it what will happen if i like come in with my glove and do this that's already drying now you know it's not bad let's do blue and orange it that's just going to give me a, uh, some type of a mixed color isn't it so what i'm going to do is add black for some reason i just love the black smoosh it around because i want that black all over let's get that blue that i just made this was me okay so this lid isn't great all right so i just made this blue five minutes ago so let's see how it's gonna work oh look at that it's leaking okay so i'm not gonna <gasps> it's gone on my table will that come off yes it will come off i need to work quickly here because this is evaporating so here we go hmm. all right so what i'll do now is i'm going to add orange all right so the orange isn't very potent i can leave it for a little bit longer so what i'll do now is just get the bits that it's probably going to look well, it's all mixing up with the other blue that I have in there. So it's not coming up as very orange, is it? Ooh, I like that. It's like those psychology things, you know. What do you see in this picture? So you can do all sorts of stuff, like you can let it run. If you have a whole lot of pigment on there, it's going to run, of course. You can like get your edges here. I don't know. you can let it dry i'm gonna let it dry just for a second that cleaned up just fine i kept thinking of all this ink that i still have i'm just gonna pick it all up like this pick it all up just get it all on here it's only gonna cover a little bit it's kind of like jolly printing in a, in a way isn't it you're just playing around with patterns and see what you can come up with all right so all of that has been picked up so now i see a little bit of yellow here so i'm just thinking perhaps i will do this i'm gonna add a little bit of yellow a few drops here and there and then pop this right on top to see what's gonna happen i like that pick up a bit more yellow it's so much fun all right and now this one here i wanted to do something with this one so i'm thinking i'm gonna add a little bit of pink maybe i can do this i don't know i'm just playing around pop it down lift it up mm. not that fabulous but you know that's what it's all about trial and error see what works i just got kind of like a purple color because i mixed blue and pink when i first started making them i was dropping inks you know directly onto the cards and i didn't really love the effect so for example this one okay so this one is actually a pretty good one and this one was done by just dropping the inks directly onto the card rather than doing this this takes a lot more time and here it is another thing like i was just dropping the inks and i just wasn't loving the results like you know look at this one the smooshing the smooshing down i actually really love some of them you know are not that great and then you have some that are just fabulous like i love this one it looks like a universe explosion or something look at this love this one okay so this is the type of thing look at this one this is all you get this from dabbing down you don't get it from trying to you know get this perfect look look at this one okay so this is one where i was dropping the paint on top i'll just do one more and then i'll show you some of the other things that i've done I just like adding the black because it adds a nice kind of outline so when I drop some other color see how that starts to happen yeah so I really like those black edges I need to stop talking because this is drying very quickly so I'll just add a bit of this add a bit of that and see what happens maybe I'll add yellow all around that kind of looks like a little flower or something probably going to look nothing like that on the card okay it's not bad and now i just want to get rid of the white i'm obsessed with getting rid of the white even though i know that the white actually looks quite good and there's that one 
you can get really crafty with this which I didn't really but you can get tools I mean this is just handy and you can stamp for example this is it just came with some type of packaging and as you can see I've already used it and you might have seen some of the effects like here and that's how I achieved that there's other ones oh look at the color on this one and this one look at this one this is what I mean about the black okay I'm getting sidetracked so you can see the effect of this little sponge thing I just want to finish this card that we kind of started you know I want to see maybe if this orange is starting to get a bit of ink happening and I'm just going to pick that up so you can come back when the cards are dried and try to add a different color and so on so this isn't looking that great but what I'm thinking of doing is just want to demonstrate other stuff that you can do so and then I kind of get it on to the sponge I probably have too much and then I just do this probably going overboard now but you get the point oh that's looking quite nice there's also the straw method thing where you put ink on your paper and then you blow and then you get this you know thing happening I wasn't a fan because I found I was um, getting a headache I was really close to the fumes and I just gave up on that if you get some marks on your working surfaces generally speaking it comes off quite easy even if it's like a permanent sharpie marker but if it doesn't come off easy just add a little bit of that alcohol onto some type of a rag and it comes right off I don't know what happens if it's on your clothes so just be careful all right let's see what we've got in our session today let me just say that it's very addictive because you can get so many done in such a little time and I didn't even use all of my colors they dry very quickly so it's like bang 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 done and then maybe you can come in with a cotton bud or something pop it in your solution and then add little extra fun you know okay so then when you have all of these papers what can you do with them oh uh, there's another thing that I wanted to mention theoretically your alcohol inks can be used on any non-porous surface I tried with buttons it's a pla uh, plastic white buttons and you know I didn't they were just white buttons and I, I didn't love the results so I gave up but that is an idea that you can pursue I have also tried with acetate packaging you know just acetate from uh, some toy box right and I hated this uh, it didn't it's sticky and I don't know why this is happening but you can see that color is coming off so I abandoned that idea even though it kind of looks all right here but another thing you might want to explore further alcohol inks are supposed to stain glass I'm not really sure if these actually stain glass I suppose so so that's another thing you can have fun with maybe coloring some glass beads or even plastic beads and all that sort of stuff I don't know just experiment here we go it does seem to color it a little bit and interestingly enough for some strange reason I didn't try it on just plain paper so I'm gonna do that now I bet it would look really good on watercolor paper this isn't watercolor paper this is just really low quality standard paper of course I'm gonna protect my desk what happens if it's just plain paper not everybody has photo paper lying around that's what happens you just get color on there <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking is gonna happen probably take a little longer to dry oh I'm actually liking this a whole lot hmm the colors are kind of merging you know kind of like creeping into each other so you can see this orange is starting to look definitely a lot more pigmented what else do we have I'm just making a real mess now aren't I it started off nice and then I just ruined it but I really wasn't sure how it's going to work on paper actually I like the back even better look at that that's the front and that's the back oh the back looks really nice so you can see how that color 
runs you know it blends you can see here these two colors so i do like this effect and just one last thing i'm gonna try is the smooshing technique with the paper i want to see what's gonna happen here we go let's smoosh it in oh it goes right through <laughs> and what did you think is gonna happen i'm talking to myself oh look at that it's actually quite nice quite nice indeed you know i really really like this and i don't mean like this in particular i mean the way it's coming up on paper the smooshing technique and i think this would be really cool to use in so many different projects like how would you use this any way you would use any other scrapbook paper right you can make all sorts of things with this do i like the back better it, the back is not bad either all right you can scan this and make digital prints all right so i just want to show you what i've actually made with these i have quite a few here and still i felt bad in actually using them up this might even be my favorite one i really love this one it looks like writing i made some tags and when i was making these tags i was choosing the absolute least favorite papers that i had here's a little like a nameplate kind of thing some more of those nameplate things this one here was a really bad looking one and you know when you chop it down in smaller sections it looks much more acceptable then some more little tags made a frame this is all made of flower this is all from that one that was really bad one of the first ones i did but then you can see like when when you chop them down and make something fun with them they are pretty cool made some more flowers and things i think these look really cool especially this one i love this one looks so good it looks different because it's a photo material so it, it looks different than just paper um flowers and it is a little bit more sturdy as well and then you can see this one this is all done on my die cut machine and made more little tags and things like that and i think they these look so cool especially like these little ones just love them so much and then i also popped them through the embossing machine as well i'm not sure how excited i am about this but i have to say i'm i am a little bit excited about this yes i am i also used my punchy thing can't remember any names today and just punched out some little hearts i don't know if i want to show this one this one is a little bit of a major fail and then i just did some little you know flowers and things like that and little hearts over here and i just want to show you these little hearts and little shapes they look like tiny little enamel dots because they are see what i mean they kind of i don't know they're raised a little bit and they have that shine to them so i thought that was really cute see what i mean like a little enamel dot anyway we can go on for all of eternity because what you do with these is pretty much what you would do with any paper that you have in your possession you can make all sorts of things and i think i love them some more than others like this this was that dripping technique you know where i drip directly onto the card and remember how i said i didn't like it this is why it just doesn't look good it really doesn't let's be honest here okay this smooshing technique definitely looks much better if you are a complete color how should i say this if you are a complete color theory novice okay like myself i know nothing about color and you know i always have to remind myself hang on what's primary color which colors are primary colors i don't know why it's a thing i cannot remember so i have this color wheel and basically i look at it and it tells me here you know what the primary colors are what the secondary colors are and how you get them by mixing primary colors so the reason why uh, you can find this very easily on the internet so the reason why i'm mentioning this is because red yellow and blue are the primary colors i don't have red i have pink so i'll just pretend this is red so you pretty much just need these three colors and then you can make blue you can make purple you can make orange 
you can make green I'm not sure like have a look on the internet okay you can make all these other colors and then you can make different colors by mixing secondary colors with primary colors so, so you don't need to make all these separate colors separately you can just make the three colors and then mix them up on your mixing thing or drop them down and they will mix into that color or you know have a, another bottle where you pop the two colors in and you mix them up and you get this ink right i'm sure you probably know all of this but i don't know all of this so i kind of have to study my color wheel i had this for years and i thought just by owning it suddenly i'm gonna somehow integrate its knowledge without you know actually learning it but there we have it i am quite happy with the overall result just knowing that we can have something out of nothing is just so much fun to me in my own mind please let me know what you think does this seem like a worthwhile project or a worthwhile thing to do i really don't think it's all that complicated or messy or anything like that i didn't find that anyway and i just think that the results are so worth it and not only the results but the creative process of just having a little bit of fun also please share all of your ideas that you have for using these alcohol inks in the comments down below so that everyone can benefit and just in case if you're sitting on the fence on whether you want to proceed with this project go and have a look at the comments and see if you can see some ideas that spark your interest Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!